Hey there, future biologists. Today we're diving into the world of scientific sources. By the end of this video, you'll be pros at spotting the difference between primary and secondary sources in biology. Let's get started. First up, primary sources. These are the original research papers where scientists report their findings for the first time. Think of them as the fresh produce of the scientific world. For example, in 2022, researchers published a paper in the journal Frontiers in Plant Science about discovering a new species of water lily. They described its unique features, how they found it, and why it's different from other water lilies. That's a primary source, straight from the scientists who did the work. So what makes a source primary? Well, it usually has these features. A detailed methods section, step-by-step -step description of how the study was conducted. This allows other scientists to replicate the experiment if they want to. A detailed results section, presentation of the data collected, often including statistical analyses, data tables, graphs or charts. A discussion of the findings, interpretation of the results, how they fit with existing knowledge, and their implications. And a list of references, crediting the scientists and researchers whose work provided the foundations for their study. Now let's dive deeper into secondary sources. These are like the smoothies of the science world. They blend information from various primary sources to give you the big picture. Secondary sources in biology include textbooks. These compile knowledge from many primary sources to give you a comprehensive overview of a topic. Sometimes there may not be an entire textbook dedicated to your topic, but rather a chapter within one. Review articles. These summarize and analyze multiple primary studies on a specific subject. They're great for getting up to speed on the current state of a field. Science news articles. Written for the general public, these explain scientific discoveries in more accessible language. Encyclopedias, dictionaries, and other reference books. These provide broad overviews and background information on various biological topics. Educational videos or documentaries. These often synthesize information from multiple primary sources to explain complex topics. Let's look at a specific example. Say you're reading a biology textbook chapter about photosynthesis. It might mention that chlorophyll absorbs red and blue light more efficiently than green light, citing several primary research papers. The textbook is a secondary source because it's summarizing and explaining information from those original studies. Or consider a review article about the effects of climate change on marine ecosystems. This article might analyze and synthesize findings from dozens of primary research papers, each studying different aspects of marine life or climate impacts. The review article gives you a broad understanding of the topic without you having to read all of those individual studies. Secondary sources are incredibly valuable because they provide context and background information, summarize current knowledge in a field, make complex scientific ideas more accessible, and help you identify important primary sources for further reading. It's important to remember that secondary sources involve some level of interpretation by their authors. They're not just reporting raw data, but explaining and contextualizing it. This is why, especially for in-depth research, it's always good to trace information back to primary sources when possible. To wrap up, primary sources equals original research. Secondary sources equals summaries or analyses of primary sources. Peer review helps ensure the quality of both primary and secondary sources. And we'll talk more about that in the next video. And there you have it. You're now equipped to navigate the world of scientific literature like a pro. Happy researching, everyone.